I've seen so many videos on it. I'm just super, super nervous to actually do this because it seems like the hardest job that people say. I'm hoping I have enough tools for this. So here they are. Four spark plugs. So I have my four spark plugs, an assortment of extensions. So I'm probably just mainly going to be using a three inch extension. <laughs> three eighths inch drive ratchet. You see the spark plug socket, a magnetic tool, just in case if you like drop stuff like down in between like the engine. I've been watching videos on like the tricks that they use. So I'll obviously be showing you guys that as well. The main point for today's video is I don't want to jack up the engine or like unbolt any of the engine mounts. So we're gonna try to do this without doing any of that stuff. Just unplug this. It's two 10 millimeters, one right here, one right here. We just got it out of the way because we have to move this hose away from the ECU so we can pull the ECU back towards the firewall. I'm probably not even going to hook this up again because it's literally just like a sound tube so it's pretty pointless to me. We're just going to get that out of the way for now. Next thing we're going to do is remove these ECU bolts so we can pull it back towards that way. And the ratcheting ones would be dead. Ow! My finger! <laughs> So the ECU is attached right here, so we just like turned it back towards the firewall. All right, so we made up all this room now. So you can actually see the coil packs now, and it's those two black things right there. One, two, 10 mil that holds both of those in. The half inch drive is way too big to fit in that spot. So we need to use a 3 8 inch ratchet. I don't have a 10 mil for that size, so we're gonna have to run and get one, unfortunately. Now it's just for the fuel lines, this little bracket right here. Gotta remove it to make some room. Gosh, I need a ratcheting wrench so bad. <laughs> so this bracket right here is hooked up, like right here. So it's like pretty much blocking the way to like stick your hand on there. So take that out. So now without the bracket, you can literally just pull these lines back. <laughs> so next is removing this cover right here. It's two 12 mils, one right there. I can't really see it, but also wonder here. This is kind of tight. No, this thing is casual. I have to really strong bar too. That's weird. There you go. <laughs> all right, now since we removed all that, we can see that looks all way the coil easier. packs. Like the frame kind of bends like that, so the fourth cylinder is, they say, the hardest to um, to remove due to like the minimal space. That's pretty much it for removing stuff for clearance. So just that fuel cap thing, whatever it is, I removed both of the, what's it called, strut braces? Strut, strut bars? Strut bars. <laughs> also took off the bracket that was right here for the fuel lines. Then on the passenger side, unbolted this tubing. Push that out of the way, then unbolted the ECU and pulled that back towards the firewall. So we took the 10 mils off and now we're just removing the coil packs. We're having trouble with the fourth cylinder, the farthest one. So we're trying to disconnect the wire. Trying to disconnect the coil pack first and then remove it. Maybe so. We got one coil pack off. It has this like weird metal clip that attaches it. Woo! Damn, that fourth cylinder is the worst. Yeah, you definitely have to remove the metal clips because it's like a clamp that goes through these, through these little openings. You'll see it when you do it. So we got all four coil packs out. So yeah, just remove the metal clips that attach the uh, the wires to the coil pack itself. And then after you take that little clip off, they'll easily slide off. And then you'll take the coil pack out. Day two. As you guys saw, the car starts. So I must have did something right if the car starts fine. It's the next day now when I'm filming this. Full spark plug change is complete. I didn't get the clips that I wanted to because this camera is not really good with like low lighting and I can't really like zoom in on parts. Um, it was just really tight space to work with. 
so I couldn't get the best shots for you guys so I apologize for that also I wanted to get the job done and I wanted to do it right so I was kind of focusing on doing it um, it wasn't the easiest job but it wasn't really really hard I got it done in the garage in about like three hours I want to say if you guys want to do this yourself make sure to follow this right here 3 8 inch drive ratchet with a little extension I want to say it's like a one and a half inch extension the swivel joint in the middle and the spark plug socket so in this correct sequence this will perfectly fit where the spark plug goes but once I break this spark plug loose um, I pretty much just take it off of the ratchet thread it out by hand and then as it threads out more you're obviously gonna run into space issues so I just took piece by piece off as I thread it out more took off the little extension so you have more room to thread it out and it won't hit the frame and um, yeah that's pretty much what I did for the coil pack you're gonna need a 10 millimeter for a 3 8 inch I have a half inch drive and the 10 millimeter for this didn't work because this thing is so wide compared to the 3 8 inch drive just make sure to do that that's a quick tip for you guys I'll also link a video in the description below that really helped me out a lot so if you guys want to refer to that video check that out so enough of that spark plug talk. It is a new day. We have a new thing to get done. And I'm so excited to show you guys, but I got my new wheels. Oh my gosh. These things are so icy. These are the new wheels, guys. Heritage Ibisus. Just got it back last night from Chamorro Boy. These are six inch lips with a six and a half inch inner barrel. So this is a 12 and a half inch wheel. This thing is massive. Look how wide this thing is. <laughs> so crazy. I'm hoping this fits in the rear, honestly. These are 18 by 12 and a half and 18 by 10 for the fronts. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to put this on the car. Let's load the truck up and head to the tire shop. Oh my gosh, you can see my battle scars from replacing my spark plugs. <laughs> Literally my hands are all cut up. When I was watching those videos, they were saying to wear long sleeves and that your arms will get beat up. I didn't really believe it at first, but damn. But after doing it, it's pretty true. But I quickly wanted to tell you guys while I'm on the way to the tire shop right now, if you guys ever need any work done to your like FRS or B or Z, feel free to hit me up on Instagram, DM me. Always down to like help people out. Um, for way cheaper than any shop would charge you. Like a lot of people don't want to tackle the spark plug job, but if you guys need your spark plugs, hit me up. Clutch installs, coilovers, exhaust, anything. Like I said, I'll be way cheaper than any shop out there. I was waiting for my wheels for a long time. I want to say three to four weeks. I was waiting for my wheels to get rebuilt. The lips are out of stock, so I had to wait a long time. But again, shout out to Tremora Boy for taking care of my wheels again. He's done so many wheel rebuilds on my wheels. Since I've had a lot of wheel setups, he's awesome. If you guys need any stuff done to your wheels, powder coating, polishing, literally anything regarding wheels, hit him up. Make sure to tell him that I sent you. few moments later. Yo, so we finally made it back to the house. Oh my gosh. These things are massive. <laughs> Look how wide these are. It's pretty, there's a lot of stretch too. It's a 275-35 on a 12 and a half. Damn, that's, that stretch is actually pretty crazy. <laughs> Fronts, it's a 225-40 on a 10. Usually I do 215-40s, but um, these tires actually came with my wheels, so I'm just going to make the best out of these tires. I usually don't run 225s. Hopefully I don't run into any rubbing issues, especially with the frame on the fronts because um, I already rub a lot on the top. So this being a bigger tire, I'm kind of worried that it will rub. I'm going to go ahead and get these stock wheels off the car and test fit these wheels and hopefully they fit. <laughs> Pretty good. 
So this is how they look on the front. <laughs> Bro, that looks so good. Oh my gosh. So this is still in the air. That's pretty good. I might add a five millimeter on. I just might, just to poke it out a little bit because I like it better like that, but pretty good so far. This is the part I'm really scared for, the rears. <laughs> no way. Oh my gosh, I think I just nailed it like perfectly. Damn, let me know what you guys think. Dude, I'm freaking hyped. I did not expect it to be, wow. I'm literally speechless, that looks so good. Set up on the FRS. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you guys like the wheels. They look so clean on the car. Now I'm gonna try my hardest to keep these wheels clean because three-piece wheels are hard to keep clean in general. Right, it is starting to rain super hard out here, but comment down below what you guys think of the new wheel setup on the FRS. Guys, I'm getting soaked out here. I will see you guys in the next video.